All right, looks like we're getting um, a fair amount of people on here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here. Um, just want to thank everyone for joining us today and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'm Abby Ball, Director of Marketing here at Marion Square, and with me today is co-founder and CEO Harvey Morrison, co-founder and CRO Greg Imahara, along with Kerasoft's Director of Market Research and TMF expert Caitlin Lewis. Just a quick overview of the agenda for today. We're going to explore what the Technology Modernization Fund is, or TMF as you hear us reference this as today, why it could potentially be important for your organization and how you may be able to take advantage of the millions of dollars of funding behind it. We'll overview the TMF application process and provide some of our tips and best practices for pursuing the TMF opportunities. And just a few housekeeping items before we get started today. We will be recording the webinar today so that we can share this later on. Everyone will be muted for the duration of this webinar, but we encourage you to submit any questions you may have through the Q&A window, as we'll be doing a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. All right, Greg, I'll hand it to you to let us get started and share more about Marion Square. Sounds good. Uh, thanks, Abby. Um, you want to get to... There you go. So our objective today is to provide, as Abby mentioned, an overview of background on TMF. We'll talk a little on why it's interesting or should be interesting for you and how TMF can be very valuable to your organization and why you should consider pursuing it. So. Uh, a little bit about Marion Square. Um, you know, our mission is to help innovative companies identify and win government contracts. You know, we help our clients successfully navigate the government markets through identifying active and funded opportunities, um, help them build the, the qualified pipeline and provide critical sales and go-to-market support required to win contracts. Um, one thing I really want to note is we have a strong, a really strong and long-time working relationship with Kerasoft. Uh, we help with their emerging tech vendors, help them find new opportunities, uh, create the go-to-market strategy, execute. We, we have uh, and we enjoy working uh, with them. So. All right, so what is TMF? I think most of us have heard about the Technology Modernization Fund from the 2021 American Rescue Plan. However, TMF um, has been established since 2017 through the Modernizing Government Technology Act of 2017. Um, and TMF is a unique funding tool designed to help drive IT modernization in the federal government. So the purpose of this funding is to modernize legacy systems, and it's really meant for big systematic upgrades, not just small fixes. Um, there is a TMF board that is comprised of seven permanent voting members and four rotating members um, who have technical expertise in areas such as cybersecurity, user design, research, um, which really enables them to evaluate every proposal and actively advise agencies on best practices for their modernization needs. If we can go to the next slide. Um, so the uh, history of TMF. So like I previously mentioned, TMF was established in 2017 and it has its seven board members. Um, now, what really put this program on the map is the billion dollars from the American Rescue Plan, which really kickstarted this modernization era um, because COVID shined a light on how far government technology is behind. Um, so to kind of further emphasize the importance of this funding, there's been two executive orders that I think a lot of us are familiarized with. Um, one is the executive order for improving the nation's cybersecurity. Um, that's really focusing on zero trust in the executive order for transforming federal customer experience and service delivery to rebuild trust in the government, which is um, for customer experience. And both of these executive orders place great emphasis on modernization needs. Um, and TMF really continues to gain traction. So this fiscal year, there was an additional $175 million put into this program. Um, and today, TMF has invested over $500 million in agency IT projects, showing us that they are using this funding. Um, and through our research, we are seeing that Congress will be allocating more budget towards the TMF in FY23. So, so why do we like uh, the TMF program for agencies? You know, at Marion Square, we work quite a bit with our clients to help them identify and pursue what we think are high value, uh, high return types of opportunities. 
And some of the key characteristics we like to focus our clients in on when we look at government opportunities are, you know, is there funding assigned to this particular project? Is the funding line item for that project or, or are they going around trying to find funding for it? Is there a formatted or laid out process and timeline associated with this project? Because we all know, you know, running government sales opportunities, a lot of times the timeline and the process to get to a yes can be very nebulous. So we like to find opportunities for our clients that have well-defined timelines and processes to make a decision. And then is there a contract vehicle associated with it? So once the decision is made, an acquisition can actually happen. These for us are really ideal types of projects that we think organizations or we advise our clients to be looking for. And if you look at how TMF is broken out, it follows and checks all the boxes for those characteristics. They've, they've got funding as, as Caitlin just discussed, and they're adding more funding to this. Caitlin's going to review the process on how you pursue these types of funds. So they have a very well-defined process, um, not only with where you're supposed to permit or submit your proposals, but the outlines for what your proposals are supposed to look like. And they've also got, lastly, the contracting vehicle to go along with it to make these purchases. So we like TMF because it's a really well-defined program that's got an assigned budget uh, to it. And if your technology fits into these spaces, which Caitlin will cover here in just a minute, we think it's something that your organization should definitely look at or consider trying to pursue. So what are the technology focus areas for the technology modernization fund? So the government has identified five technology focus areas as their modernization priorities. Um, as you can see, there's a broad range from cybersecurity, digital services to data as a strategic asset. When you start looking into leveraging these funds, you need to make sure your solutions fit into one of these categories because these are the areas of opportunity. Next slide. Yeah, we, we have this slide in here because we wanted to make sure we highlighted for folks that this is an active program and they are funding these opportunities. Um, a lot of times in government, they come out and announce with great fanfare and press releases, hey, we've got a great opportunity or we're doing this great program and it ends up really going nowhere. This is proof positive from 2018 on you'll see the government is awarding contracts um, and continues to award contracts. So this, this process um, that, that the government has for TMF uh, is working and it is being followed. So we just wanted to highlight this for organizations as you start to think about, should I allocate resources potentially for this? As Caitlin reviewed it, if your technology falls into one of those categories, um, you, you should consider looking at this because it is they are awarding uh, contracts and they are going through the process. All right, so what does it take to get this funding? So as Harvey mentioned earlier, the reason we like TMF is that there is a formal standardized process. Um, the proposal process is really comprised of two phases. Uh, phase one is a five page outline, really known as the initial project proposal. Phase two is a presentation to the board um, of the entire project proposal, so the full project proposal. Um, and there are templates and criteria for you guys to be leveraging during this phase. Um, hey, Caitlin, just, just, just one other yeah. comment there, if it's okay. Absolutely. The, the other thing that we like about this and why we advise our clients to take a look at it is the proposal process. So phase one, as Caitlin mentioned, is just a five page white paper. Now you need to do your research and show on that white paper how your technology is solving a problem and map it to that technology modernization fund. But it's not a long drawn out you know, process where you have to spend lots of time and resources developing a proposal on a white paper that they could just reject. So you, you do the phase one, you get that into them. If the TMF board looks at it and says, hey, there's value here, we wanna to proceed to a phase two. So they're vetting out opportunities or they're vetting out proposals that they don't feel like are a fit. So you don't have to spend a vast amount of resources and time pursuing this. They're gonna let you know right up front, yeah, we think this is interesting or not. And then you can invest the time in that for a phase two proposal. And as Caitlin said, 
the phase two proposal, they've got a template that's outlined there that you have to follow to submit it, one. And then two, you'll have to go present to the board on this is why uh, our technology is of value and why we think it'll solve these problems. Keeping in mind now with TMF, this is a situation where you're gonna go in with the agency to fund this thing or to, or to put position and pitch this thing. So you've got to have a good partnership with your agency and you have to educate them on that because they're going to be the key to going with you to getting this funding. Great point. All right, so um, so like Harvey was mentioning, right, there's really five key pieces of criteria to really keep in mind throughout this proposal process. Um, one is what is the impact on the agency's mission? Um, how feasible is the project? What technology and cost saving opportunity does this project provide? Um, how will the project reduce the outdated common solutions? And does the project success depend on statutory or regulatory changes? Um, so uh, when you guys are um, putting your response together for the board, you need to make sure that they can pull out these key components. Um, like Harvey said, don't just send common white papers and think you will win. You really, really need to form a strategy around this. Yeah, I, I can't emphasize that enough, Caitlin, is you know a lot of what we're seeing that really helps make these things successful is doing your research and then really highlighting and walking the board through why your technology or why your joint proposal are gonna help them meet these criteria. The nice thing is they've laid the criteria out so you really know you're not guessing about what they want or what they're thinking about. You know exactly what they're looking for. So as you write these proposals, make sure it, it highlights these things. You know, the impact on the agency's mission. The other key thing that they're talking about is, is how feasible is it that we can actually get it deployed in a timely manner? And what type of return on investment are we going to get? Is it going to save time? Is it going to improve, you know, the uh, the net promoter score for the agency because uh, citizens are able to access and find information a whole lot easier. So really think about that as you go through and start to create even that five page proposal and make sure what you're what you're presenting. It's it's easy for the agency to be able to find this information. We, we've got the high impact service provider slide on here again. It's all about doing your research up front. So if you look through the TMF documentation, the government has highlighted that these agencies are high impact agencies, meaning they, they, they touch the uh, citizenship quite a bit, um, or they feel like they've got the greatest need based upon their mission to improve or uh, make better their IT infrastructure. So the TMF fund is going to weigh or prioritize projects coming from these agencies over other agencies. So as you start to do your research, you start to do your planning and your targeting, please make sure that you, you keep these agencies in mind along with, hey, how are we going to improve the mission and those sorts of things. So some of the best practices we, we really want to highlight for you as you start to think about how should I pursue this uh, or set a program like this up. First and foremost is, you know, you need to understand the technology modernization fund and what the TMF priorities really are. Uh, because if you go in with a proposal and you're not hitting one of those target areas that Caitlin talked about, they're, they're going to kick it out or they can't quickly find where you're highlighting the value you're going to provide in one of those key technology areas, they're going to kick it out and not, and you're not going to get considered for a phase two. The second thing that you need to make sure you do is understand the specific modernization needs of the agencies. Start with those high impact agencies that we talked about, because again, with the TMF fund, you as an individual cannot write a proposal and submit it to TMF and get it approved, or as a company can't write an individual proposal and get it approved, you have to go in jointly with the customer or with the agency and make that presentation. So that kind of follows into the third thing is be sure to educate your customer. So as we like to think about it, as we work with our clients, 
we want them to understand, hey, these are the modernization needs of these key agencies. This is exactly where you fit and how you can provide value. Let's go educate the agency on, you should be thinking about TMF, and we can help you agency walk through the process of generating the proposal and going together to present it. If you wait and you leave it up to the agency to do those types of things, a lot of folks in the agencies aren't going to understand this or kind of know how to access or leverage this. So think about it as a way as you're coming in, you're more than just trying to pitch a product or a service to the agency, you're trying to provide a solution. And then you're also walking them through, here's how we can actually fund this. So it's it's a pretty compelling argument, but again, it all is, you got to have the right message and it's got to be in front of the right, the right agency or the right target inside of that agency. The last thing we'll highlight for you because the TMF fund has highlighted this as a critical piece is joint agency proposals. So as you're doing your, ed your education or your research on the modernization needs of various agencies, if you can find a use case that matches one, two or three different agencies and stitch those together and get that as a proposal into the TMF, you're way more likely to win something because again, they're looking for how can we modernize and improve services really across the board. So if they're funding a solution that can meet multiple agencies requirements, your, your chances of winning are gonna go up dramatically. Okay, so Looking forward with TMF, currently right now, there's $750 million left to be spent. Um, and investments into IT modernization will continue to be a priority. As we can see by the president's budget proposal for next year, they've already requested $300 million in additional funding. Um, this is really a time to be taking advantage of this funding because government really wants to be making these large investments so we truly believe that there's a huge opportunity here for you guys to be using yeah and, and again just to kind of echo what caitlin's message is do, don't go to tmf with a fifty thousand dollar or a hundred thousand dollar proposal you you have to think enterprise wide and you have to think we're going to cause major um, improvements we're going to cause major cost reduction we're going to improve how you as an agency interact and deliver services overall so you have to really think enterprise wide in scope and very large in scope when you when you make these proposals because the type of money they're funding and the type of projects they're funding are are those types of projects so again that's why it's really critical to do your homework uh really understand the roi and how you fit into the modernization needs of those agencies So if you're ex as excited uh, as us, if you think TMF is a fit for you, if you think it's uh, right for your organization, since there's technology focused areas that apply, there's funding, there's a process you want to pursue, we hope today helped you. Um, now, if you don't think your organization has the resources or capabilities to do the research, put the plan together, write a TMF proposal jointly and execute, uh, give us a call. Mary Square at Kerasoft have a program to help you successfully uh, go after opportunities uh, like TMF on there. So. Yeah, so we're, we're happy to help. Um, like I say, the folks at Kerasoft have a lot of tools. Uh, Caitlin leads a great research group there that can help you with a lot of research around these things. And Marion Square's got um, the research capabilities and the resources to help organizations as well. But again, if, if you feel like this is something that's a fit for you, the government is spending money in this place and they do have an identified process, which you can go out and follow and start to pursue. So we we wish you the best of luck with it. Um, and again, don't hesitate to reach out to either Kerasoft or us uh, if you've got questions or need additional information. So Abby, I think with that, we can turn it over to any specific questions that may be out there. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a couple. Um, so one, um, the TMF isn't for um, vendors necessarily, it's for agencies. Is that correct? Yeah, so, th so that's correct. So the agencies are the ones that are the sponsors to go into the TMF fund and request the funds for this. Where the vendors come in is a lot of times these agencies don't know that the um, uh, these funds are available or even this program is available. 
So what we like to say is, as you, you read the modernization priorities for the agency, you identify those program offices that are responsible for those modernization programs, and then you go in and talk to them about, hey, our, pro our solution can solve this problem or meet your needs from a modernization perspective. And we know how to help you go as an agency pursue the TMF funds for this particular program or for this particular um, agenda that you have. Thanks, Harvey. Um, we had a couple more come through. One is, is the TMF available for state and local law enforcement agencies? Um, the slide we presented showed several federal agencies. Yeah, so TMF at this moment is just for federal agencies. Um, to my knowledge, there's no version of it that they've sent or spent funds set aside for state and local agencies. Caitlin, you, you probably know better than I do from that perspective. So I think this is a really interesting question because traditionally, if state and local law enforcement gets any kind of funding, it will be funneled through the DOJ. So they'll get a bucket of funding and then they'll disperse grants. So I think there is an opportunity for a project for state and local law enforcement um, agencies. It's just how you kind of propose it um, to, I would say, like d the Department of Justice would be your best bet. Yeah, that's interesting. So their their customers would be state and local law enforcement. So to better mm -hmm. serve those folks, they could potentially get a TMF um, fund for that. Yes. Great. That's 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 interesting. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so the contracting vehicle for TMF. Um, what exactly is the contracting vehicle? Yeah, you want to take that, or you want me to take it? I'm okay. Yeah. Um, so I, it's going to be a mixture of both. It's really how the customer wants to kind of solicit um, the project out. So it will really depend on once it gets awarded. Um, and then just like any kind of think of like BPAs, um, then they will then um, go out to, um, um, you know, solicit their needs. So I can see them using GSA because they're partnered with GSA, um, but then we can also see it on soup and other different contract vehicles. Um, and sometimes too, if you're working with the customer, you can let them know, hey, we want to procure this um, product and they're only available on XYZ contracts. So they're going to be flexible. Yeah, and Kerasoft has a whole list of those vehicles that uh, yeah. that can be utilized. That's That's, that's one of the great area of expertise that they have there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, OK, are there other technology focus areas being considered? If so, how do we gain visibility into those? I, I don't believe at with this latest version of TMF, there are other technology areas being um, uh, considered. But what I would say is, when the new budget rolls out in 2023, um, that would be the time they would probably add in the new technology uh, focus areas if they were going to. So I guess the the answer to that would be you know TBD. So so stay tuned. Uh, and when the new government budget rolls out, October, well, it, supposedly October, but you know November, <laughs> December timeframe, uh, that would be the time they would probably add new technology focus areas if they were going to. Thank you. Um, OK, this question. Um, a large FSI will likely be needed for rolling out enterprise wide solutions. How do innovation vendors identify the appropriate FSI? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. And, and we we at Marion Square <laughs> answer this a lot of times for our clients. Uh, and we think the best thing, again, starts with the research and understanding you know, what FSIs do a really good job in whatever particular area of focus you're in, one, and are there FSIs that already have a good standing relationship with those agencies? And if that's the case, approach those FSIs with a proposal that says, we want to pursue technology modernization fund, and we're going to need a partner to go in on this overall proposal. So will you help us do this? Um, it's a much better approach, and I think you'll get a much better response from an FSI doing that uh, than just walking in saying, hey, I know you're a particular FSI, you do a lot, a lot of work in the government, would you be willing to help us? You, you need to really get some context with it 
and make it directly applicable to them, I think, to make that successful. Yes, and if I could add to that, uh, Kerasoft has a great FSI team, um, so they can help kind of get you in contact with the right people. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to us. Um, yep, but I think doing your research up front absolutely. and making sure it all is applicable is uh, so we don't call and just go, hey, just get me in front of an FSI. It's, hey, get me in front of this particular FSI because we know they have expertise in this area, both from a technology perspective and from an agency perspective. Thank you. Um, OK. Is this related to the Cyber Phase 2? I'm assuming TMF related to the Cyber Phase 2. And mm -hmm. the second part of the question is, or are we able to consider a $50 million budget? Yeah, so so this has nothing to do with with the SBIR program. They're they're two completely separate programs. I'm not sure I follow the the fifty million dollar budget, but uh, I'm assuming if you can justify a fifty million dollar acquisition for an agency and it supports the uh, the the TMF initiatives, um, that could be something you could propose here. I don't think there's any limit. Caitlin, help me or correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's any limit. Like an SBIR says, you can only go to 1.75 million for a phase two. There's no limit, I think, on the num on the funding number that you can propose to TMF. Correct. It's really just going to be dependent on what is needed for the project, and the board will kind of help um, with those guidelines. Yeah. And what's the value you're going to return for the money that you would propose? Yeah. Thank you. Um, OK, can the TMF be used to cover multiple years? For instance, a SAS offering could be paid for by the TMF in the first year, but could the agencies use it for additional years of the subscription? I, I don't know the answer. I'm, I'm assuming yes, but I think I would need to follow up. But Caitlin, you, you may know this. Um, it can be used for multiple years. That's really um, how they want to be leveraging. Uh, you know, the TMF funding. They don't want to just be a one and done. They want something that can be used multi-year that's really going to provide them those cost savings. Awesome. Thank you. Um, could the funds be used for an 8A sole source without any vehicle use? That may be one we have to circle back on from an 8A perspective. I don't remember reading anything about 8A sole source um, in this fund, but let me uh, let us circle to jot that down if you would, Abby, and let's let's yep. circle back on that question specifically. Yep, absolutely. Okay, and got a couple more questions here. Can one safely assume that the development of the current TMF support aligns itself with the President Biden's 2021 legislation, as mentioned earlier by one of the panelists, um, zero trust, a uh, zero technology architecture? Yeah, from a cybersecurity perspective, zero trust is called out. So that's that's correct. Thank you. Um, one more question. Um, talking about repayment terms, um, I know they're different based on the uh, immediacy of the project and ability of the agency to repay. Could you go into more detail? Yeah. Um, so currently right now, um, there's been a little bit of discrepancy with the repayment process. Um, GAO and GSA are currently working together to kind of figure this out because right now with the projects that they have in place, um, there's not really any repayment happening um, just because they have to see, hey, how much is this actually going to um, provide them with cost savings? Um, it's a little bit in the period of growing pains, but there's going to be more guidance coming out in the next couple of months. Okay. Um, I see there's a question here for questions we're circling back on. Yes, we will let the participants know the response um, of the, the any questions we'll be circling back on. Okay, I think we've covered all the questions for today. Um, awesome. Is there any anything else, Greg, Caitlin, so, Harvey, you want to throw in there? No, I, I think we'll circle back on those questions for sure. So thanks everybody mm -hmm. for sending those out. And then we'll also send out a copy of the web, a recording of the webinar and, and in a copy of the slide. So uh, we appreciate everybody's time today. Hopefully this was useful. 
And uh, again, reach out if you have any any questions. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone.